In this presentation, we will take a look at the purchases journal for a merchandising company. Purchases journal will be used when we make purchases for a type of system that will typically more be more of a manual system as opposed to an automated system. However, it is useful to know this in order to have an automated system because the automated system will generate reports that will be similar to a purchase journal and because it's good to know how different system works to know what are similar, what's different, so that uh, we better understand whatever system we are using. The purchases journal may better be uh, described as the uh, purchase journal on account. So that's going to be the major point, meaning if we make purchases for something that in, in cash, if we spent cash to make the purchase, then it will not go in the purchases journal, even though we made a purchase, because it will go in the cash payment journal. So this is really kind of a short name. Uh, the accounts payable journal might be a better name for it or the purchases journal on account, but purchases journal is typically the term that will be used. Now we're going to make a purchase journal for a merchandising company and limit this to a very specific type of purchase, which really is when this system would work best. Because uh, if we purchase a lot of different things on account, like we pay expenses and utility bills and, you know, uh, the gasoline bill and whatnot on expense uh, on account and we put it into accounts payable then it gets a, a little bit messy because we don't have these separate columns that uh, uh, we, we could break out we end up putting a lot into other and this system doesn't work quite as well however if all of our purchases are for something like in the case of a merchandising company inventory then this system works great because we can just record this one line item for the entire time period, whether that be the day, the week, or the month. In our case, it will be for the month. And uh, then sum that up at the end of the time period and post it with one journal entry rather than recording multiple journal entries. So we're going to go through just a couple of these. This will look a little bit repetitive here because we will be dealing with the same type of transaction, assuming that under the merchandising company, we will be debiting inventory and crediting the payable for uh, each transaction for the purchase journal. Then at the end of the month, we're going to make the journal, uh, the general journal entry, which will be the debit to inventory and credit to accounts payable, but not for each transaction for the entire month. Then we're going to post that to the general ledger. This is just an example of some accounts within the uh, general ledger. And then we will have the trial balance that will be generated. We'll see what uh, the effect is on the trial balance at the end of the month. Note that our numbers will not quite be right until the end of the month because we won't be recording them to the general ledger we won't be generating the financial statements in this system until the end of the time period in our case the end of the month first purchase seven five we're going to say l h and g we made a purchase and that's for 1500 so we're going to say in this case we're going to say it's inventory that we're purchasing we're always purchasing inventory we're using the accounts payable account to purchase inventory so the journal entry is a debit to inventory, a credit to payable, because we have not yet paid it. And it's nice and easy here. We just got one number that can represent those two items. Uh, and this type of setup works great when this is the system being used. So then we're going to post this not to the general ledger yet. We will post it to the general ledger, but not till the end of the time period, in our case, the end of the month. We will post here instead as we go to the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. The subsidiary ledger being broken out by who we owe by vendor uh, and so we might as well record that as we go because we're gonna have to record it time by time line by line so we will record this in the l h and g credit side and increase 1500 to the subsidiary ledger so we're just recording that over we're going to do this once again we got a company this is another vendor we purchased from and we purchased 900 worth of inventory. This represents a debit to inventory and a credit to accounts payable for $900. We're going to post that not to the general ledger, but to the subsidiary ledger for accounts payable. So here it is in the subsidiary ledger credit side. We bring that over 900 in the subsidiary ledger. Next, we're going to do this again. We're going to say B company. Uh, we purchased $700 worth from B company. And it is going to be posted. So that means we're going to debit accounts receivable. I mean, debit inventory and credit accounts payable. We're going to post that not to the general ledger, but to the subsidiary ledger for B company. This being the vendor. So this 700, we're going to bring down here. 
B company, uh, we now owe B company 700. So that's going to be a, a repetitive type of process. We're going to have one more here. L, H, and G. Once again, we purchased another 300. And that's a debit to inventory credit to payable represented here by the 300. Just that one line item. That being posted then to the subsidiary ledger, not to the general ledger. We will be posting to the general ledger shortly. Changing the balance from 1,500 up by 300 to 1,800 that we owe to LH and G. We can then total this up. So the 1,005 plus the 900 plus the 700 plus the 300 gives us a total of 3,400. So 3,400 is the total. Now it's the end of the month and we can use that total then to record the general journal. So note the saving of time here. Only one journal entry instead of in our case four. And depending on the process, if we're buying inventory uh, constantly throughout the month, this could save a lot of time in a manual system. So now we're going to record it just like it says up here, but not for each transaction, the, instead for the total of the transactions. So we're going to debit inventory. Remember, inventory is a debit balance account. We're going to make it to go up by doing the same thing to it, which is a debit because we're buying inventory. And then we're going to credit accounts payable. Accounts payable is a liability liabilities are credit balance accounts we need to make it go up the bad things going up we owe more money therefore we do the same thing to it in this case another credit then we're going to post this to the general ledger so the general ledger inventory is going to go up uh i'm sorry uh yeah inventory is going to go up so it was at a credit of 1593 now it was at a credit because we recorded the sales journal before the purchases journal so it shouldn't be the case that it's not the case that inventory should ever be negative. If it is, something's wrong because inventory is an asset account and it shouldn't go negative. But as we record these transactions, as we go, when we uh, we might end up recording uh, the, the sales journal before the purchase journal, and therefore we have a credit, and then we'll debit it out three thousand four hundred, flipping the sign. So one thousand five ninety three uh, plus. 3,400, this negative plus this positive, gives us a debit balance of 1,807. Then on the accounts payable side, we got the accounts payable here being posted there to the accounts payable general ledger, taking the balance from zero up by 3,400 to 3,400. Once we have all the general ledger, we're just going to show those two ledger accounts that will be affected through this process. We then make the trial balance. And we'll see these ending balances on the trial balance. So here's the 1,807 in inventory general ledger. Here's the 1,807 in inventory trial balance. Here's the 3,400 accounts payable general ledger. Here's the 3,400 accounts payable trial balance. Then we want to just make a comparison of the trial balance general ledger and accounts payable subsidiary ledger. Note that we're working here when dealing with the purchases journal accounts payable, that being a primary account we are dealing with when we are using the uh, purchases journal this number here represents the fact that we owe vendors 3400 but it doesn't tell us who we owe we don't know who to write the checks to therefore this account down here in the general ledger gives us typically more detail but in this case of course this only represents the number from the end of the month because we didn't record the detail in the general ledger it has been recorded in the accounts payable um, journal so it's i mean in the purchases journal <laughs> so here's the detail if we want to see it by date but it's not going to give us an easy breakout to buy who owes us the money we don't want to see it uh, listed by date we want to see it listed by vendor so here's the same information by vendor the accounts put say payable subsidiary ledger in other words so l h and g uh, owes us or we owe them 1800 a company we owe them 900 B company, we owe them 700. If we add those up, that adds up to 3,400, which of course is matching what is on the accounts payable general ledger as well as the trial balance.